This is an introductory tutorial for new Blender users on how to use the Blender game engine and how to take advantage of the physics, the bullet physics built into it. It's really powerful. So if you have a basic scene here, I just have a plane built into the scene and a sphere. And when you come up into Blender, it comes up as Blender render mode, but we have to be in game mode. So you click this here and go into Blender game. And I already have lights set up in this particular scene. And you should be familiar with uh, the basics of how to do that if you've seen my tutorials. I have a lot of tutorials posted on uh, in playlists, but I have a spot here in the camera and things like that. And that's what gives me these nice lights like this. But for as far as creating game effects, it's uh, we'll leave, we'll just grab this sphere and we'll just scale them down a little bit like this and move it to the side. And we'll kind of set it down so he's sitting on the right about there. And then I'll add another object to the scene. I'll add a cube this time. I'll scale that down a little bit and I'll give that a color make it maybe green like this easy to see and I'll put that down so it's pretty much sitting down there at the plane right about there as well if, and then um, to move this object normally you know when you move it there's a couple ways you move things you just grab the arrow and you move it like this but sometimes you want to just move it like in a game so that's what we're going to try and do so the window by default is called default this is your main view so but up here you can change this by clicking over here and going into game logic and this is really straightforward now this window allows you to control these objects in here it's a little small to see but your middle wheel mouse scroll allow you to scroll in like this in and out but with this cube selected that it's going to control then these control the cube so what, when you use the game logic and it says cube.002 see right there cube.002 and since this is hard to see what I usually do is do you mouse in this window hold down the control key and press the up arrow key and that'll make that section full screen then I can use the wheel mouse to zoom in a little bit more or I can hold the wheel mouse down and just move the whole wheel around so I can actually see everything in the scene and so just follow these steps, even if they don't make too much sense right at the beginning. Just by doing these steps over and over again, you'll get used to it. Click this Add Sensor button. Well, once we click it once and get a keyboard. And then we'll click it again and get another keyboard sensor. So it's sensing the keys of the keyboard is what it's asking to do. So in the first case, you left click this button here and it says to press a key. And it's like, okay, I'll press the left arrow key. And it shows up as left arrow. And then I'm going to press, I'm going to click in this box. It says press key, I'm going to click the right arrow key. So what it's looking for, the keyboard sensor says, it's, it's waiting and watching for a left arrow key to be pressed and waiting and watching for a right arrow key to be pressed. And when either of those keys are pressed, it, you want it to do something. Well, what, the thing you want it to do is over here, but you need a link in between. And to keep it simple, we'll just add a controller link. Don't even worry about what they do. Just add these. Add an AND controller like this and add another one. So two AND controllers. And then come up here and click, left click this black dot and connect it to that one there. And then left click this one and connect it to that one there. And then come over here and add an actuator. It's kind of like the event or the action that's going to take place if the keys are pressed on the keyboard. So click this and I want to do a motion actuator. So I'll put one motion actuator in and another motion actuator in there. And I'm going to connect this dot to that one and this to that one. And so what happens is when I press the left arrow key, the sensor is going to look at that. It's going to go through this and it's going to do what I'm asking it to do in here. And what I wanted to do is to change the location of the cube because that's what we're working with is a cube right here, cube.002. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to use a small amount. I'm going to click in that box. I'm going to type, let me see if that's going left. I want that to go in the negative x direction. So I'm going to type in negative 0.2. It doesn't need to be much. If you put in a huge value, you won't see anything happen because it'll all disappear in the, somewhere in the scene. And then in this one, I'll click there and I'll press 0.2. So that's going to go in the positive x direction. Negative x direction, positive x direction. You press the left arrow key. It changes the location of the cube by negative 0.2. Press the right arrow key. It changes it by 0.2. OK, now I'm going to hold down the control key and press the up arrow key and go back to this window. And then I come up here and I click back to the default window 
like this. So now, since that was the cube that's under control, if I just by pressing the left and right arrow key, well, nothing happens. But if I press the P key, that starts the physics simulation like this. And now, if I press down the right arrow key, well, you'll see it's moving not left and right. And that's because, let me hit escape. And that's because my scene I'm looking at uh, here is, I'll show you why. I'll rotate it like this because there's the positive x axis that way. Red is positive x and that would be negative x. So let me move these guys out of the scene a little bit. Let me move this into the light. Like this. Alright. So now we're facing it in the proper orientation. So there's positive x. It's just like mathematics when you get into three-dimensional mathematics. Positive x, positive y, positive z. Like this. Alright. So now when I run the simulation by pressing P, hold down the right arrow key, it moves right, hold down the left arrow key, it moves left. Each press like that, or if I just hold it down, it just constantly moves like this. Alright, now when it gets to the sphere, however, it goes right through the sphere. Well, that's not what we really want. Really, ideally, you would want it, you know, like the old Pong games, you want to come along and move that sphere out of the way, right? Well, that's what we'll do within the next lesson. And so I'll see you then.